Merry Christmas uh, and welcome to Tusculum Baptist Church. We're glad that you can be worshiping with us for our Christmas Eve service. Of course, we're not uh, meeting at the church uh, for our, our worship, but just this online experience. But we're really uh, glad that you've joined in with us. As I thought about it, I wondered if there had ever been a time, this is a long-standing tradition at Tusculum Baptist, and had we not ever had, due to weather, the Christmas Eve service. So, and I don't know how far you'd have to go back, probably a long, long time, or, or maybe it never has. But as somebody said about a lot of things this year in 2020, then why not this year <laughs> have to miss it because uh, so many other things have been bizarre uh, this year. So anyway, we're, we're just thankful that uh, we can worship together. And if you're joining with us from another congregation, or maybe you don't have a church home, uh, then we are just thankful that you can be a part of this as well. If you don't have a church home, we would love to be able to encourage you and provide you information about the church. So give us a call or email, and we'll be glad to help you any way that we can. So uh, I just want to say a prayer uh, for this worship time and for you and your family. Uh, let's pray together. Father, thank you for the meaning of Christmas. Thank you for the joyful celebration that we enjoy each year. Uh, but yet, Lord, we want it to be something that is truly an encounter with you and not just uh, a traditional um, uh, gathering uh, of worship in which we do the same things and recall the, the, the same details. Lord, we pray that your spirit will make it an encounter that is personal and that you would speak to us and encourage us and challenge us in our faith. And we are just thankful. Lord, we just thank you for coming to be our Savior. We thank you for dying on the cross for our sin and rising from the dead, giving us the hope of eternal life. Uh, the, the hope, meaning the certainty of it, when our faith and trust is in you. So we celebrate you this Christmas season. And Lord, I pray for each one that's watching, each family that's represented, each home. I pray your blessing on uh, everyone. And Lord, we also pray for safety in this harsh weather. We pray that there will be safety and, and everyone will be um, uh, in good uh, spirits. Lord, we pray also for those who are dealing with sickness and especially those who are dealing with the coronavirus. We pray for your, your touch of healing and help in this, and we know that there are hopeful signs, and we are just thankful. So we give you praise, Lord, this Christmas uh, season, and we celebrate you and your presence with us as we worship together in Jesus' name. Amen. But let's go ahead and stand together and sing Angels from the Realms of Glory. We'll sing all four stanzas. <laughs>
going to continue singing together, and, and we're going to sing, O come, all ye faithful, O come, all ye faithful. This evening, I would like to look at the Christmas story from the perspective of Joseph and Mary. And there's two passages, one in Luke and one in Matthew, that uh, tell us about when uh, the angel came and spoke to them, telling of God's plan. And if I could entitle this message, I would call it Cooperation with God's Plans. And if there was anybody in Scripture who cooperated joyfully, though with uh, questions and concerns about it. It was Joseph and Mary, but I think there's much we can learn uh, from the two of them. First, I want to read from Luke uh, 1, verse 26 to 38, the story of uh, Mary's encounter with the angel Gabriel. And then we'll look at Joseph's experience. In the sixth month, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will be with child and give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over the house of Jacob forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The angel answered, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. Even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she, who was said to be barren, is in her sixth month. 
for nothing is impossible with God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. And then in Matthew chapter 1, uh, in verses 18 uh, through 21, I uh, want to read Joseph's experience. So this is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man, did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. And so we see that Joseph, as well as Mary, had an encounter with an angel revealing God's plans. A number of years ago, I was at a conference, and I heard uh, uh, someone at the conference say uh, about God speaking to us and revealing his ways and his will to us uh, that if we would give God a reasonable amount of cooperation, he has promised to speak to us and to lead us. And the phrase that jumped out of me was a reasonable amount of cooperation. And it was something that I had to acknowledge two things in my life. First, at that time and, and, and since then, I feel that I had been trying to give him a reasonable amount of cooperation. I've been trying to do the Lord's will and what he wants me to do. But the other thing I had to acknowledge is that I don't always give 100% cooperation to God. And I think if all of us are honest, then we'd have to come to that same conclusion. Um, God understands better than we do why we do not always give him 100% uh, co cooperation. But God is also willing to help us in running this race called the Christian life if we will uh, consistently give him the reasonable amount of cooperation that we are capable of. And I find that thought encouraging. And today I want us to look at these two people who gave the highest levels of cooperation to God and God's plan, Mary and Joseph, the human parents of Jesus. Their story is quite remarkable. God gave them a hard assignment, but once they understood what he wanted them to do, they uh, gave the highest levels of cooperation. The role of Joseph and Mary was unique, uh, being the, the parents, uh, the human parents of Jesus. No one else in human history has been given an assignment like that. But that doesn't mean that you and I cannot learn from their example, because I think there are some very easily recognizable, timeless lessons in their story that we can learn from. You see, sometimes God gives us hard assignments, but he also gives grace and strength to do them if we give him the cooperation and obedience required. We see that in these passages of Scripture that both Mary and Joseph were visited by an angel of the Lord who explained God's miraculous plan for the coming of the Messiah. We're told in Luke that it was the angel Gabriel, uh, the most powerful, uh, one of two angels mentioned with great power, Michael and Gabriel. Gabriel explained to her how she would become pregnant in this mysterious way in the miraculous work of the Holy Spirit. And this was to fulfill the prophecy of Isaiah 7, 14, which spoke of the virgin being being with child. And after she became pregnant, Matthew's gospel tells us that an angel went to Joseph. And it doesn't mention his name. We don't know if it was the same angel. Was it Gabriel or was it some other apprentice angel that was getting some on-the-job training? We don't know. But nevertheless, the two young people were told separately that their assignment was the important job of being the earthly parents of Jesus during his years of growing from infancy to adulthood. Well, what can we learn from these two people of faith, Joseph and Mary, about cooperation with God and his plans? Well, the first thing I think we should uh, notice in this story is that uh, an assignment from God is a privilege, not a problem. You see, they could have perceived it as a problem, as a burden, a challenge that was given to them that they did not want to, to accept and so on. But notice how Gabriel spoke to Mary 
uh, when he came to her revealing the plan. He said, greetings, you are, who are highly favored. The Lord is with you. And the scripture says that Mary was greatly troubled by this kind of greeting. What was this all about? But the angel said, do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. Uh, you will be with child and give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus. What a great encouragement that must have been to her to find that she had found favor with God. I think one of the reasons she had found favor with God is because she was in the habit of giving him a reasonable amount of cooperation. She was trying to please God and do his will. When the angel said, you're highly favored, it means to bestow favor or grace on someone in the context of for a special purpose or for a vocation. The greeting wasn't that Mary was very blessed or happy, but that she uh, could be happy because she found favor with God, and she had been living a life that was pleasing to Him. God had chosen her for a special assignment. And this implied the Lord's presence, that He would be with her, that He would strengthen her, He would enable her to fulfill this assignment that He was giving her to do. Mary was about to begin a journey through the rest of her life with God in control and having many experiences with Jesus. She would learn about God's plans and purposes. She would be an eyewitness to the miracles of Jesus. Uh, she um, was also would see him die and deal with the heartbreak of that. In a similar way, Joseph also saw the magnitude of his assignment from God. And he responded with immediate obedience. The role of Mary and Joseph was a privilege, but it was hard. For one thing, it was dangerous. There was a death threat on Jesus. We know that Herod came to kill the baby boys that were born from this certain time period that the Magi told him about, and they had to run for their life. They went to Egypt as were, they were directed by the Lord. Uh, they also knew that it was unpopular what they were doing. Uh, they had to, um, uh, there was public pressure to do something about Jesus and uproar that, you know, happened in various times in his life, especially Mary dealt with that. So an assignment from God is a privilege, uh, not a problem. Well, what about us? Do we respond the way Joseph and Mary did, or do we see it as a burden that we go into kicking and screaming like we don't really want to do it, and that it, it's going to be something that makes us not uh, joyful, but something that is a burden. Uh, and you might be wondering, well, what assignment has God given me? Well, one thing that He's given us is to follow Him. If we have committed our life to Jesus Christ, and we have uh, certain habits that we must do each day in developing a devotional life and spending time with God's Word and prayer and being a good example in our words and actions to people who don't know the Lord yet. We, we must be distinctively Christian in how we live our life. And if we are, then sometimes we're going to be made fun of. Sometimes we're going to be criticized and people would love to just see us uh, fall. People notice when you're in a work situation and you, you don't join in the immoral conversation or joking and um, you don't curse and so on. Uh, you control your emotions and you have good problem-solving skills. These all give glory to God and show that He's a part of your life and He's real in you and makes a difference in your life. But uh, when troubles come, in those same people's lives, and they need prayer, or they need wisdom from somebody who's in touch with God, it's most likely they would talk with you about it. They would know that there's something distinctively different about you. So the way you live your life, the way you walk with God is important. What other assignments? Well, there's all kinds of assignments that we're given. Sometimes it's in our families. And maybe there's a, a, a need in your family, a, a sibling or uh, a, an elderly parent or um, someone else that, that needs a caregiver. They need your help. You know, I appreciate my uh, mother who uh, has taken care of or for 44 years in her home, took care of my brother who was born with Down syndrome. Now he lives in a, a home uh, that is actually provided by a Virginia Baptist denomination. Uh, it's a blessing, but uh, she selflessly took uh, on, you know, this role of caregiver. Uh, and so for her, it was not something that was easy. 
and she's talked with me many times about it, what a difficult thing this was to accept uh, and just a shock to her and my dad. Uh, but uh, these are the kind of things sometimes people deal with. Some of these assignments that God gives us are hard. But you know what? None of these assignments surprise God. They might surprise us and take us, um, uh, you know, uh, by surprise, but no, God is uh, there for us and He will help us. An assignment from God is a privilege. It's not a problem. We learned that from Joseph and Mary. There's something else we learned, though, and that is that cooperation with God teaches that the impossible is possible. For as we see in the Scripture, it says nothing is impossible with God. The angel uh, spoke to Mary and said that she was highly favored, and she was troubled about this and this greeting. In other words, she was thoroughly confused. She tried to reason how this could be true. Uh, she was young, probably a teenager, maybe 15 or 16 years old, maybe even younger. But this was, in that culture and day and age, a uh, marriageable age. But she was a young person. She was humble. And she considered herself an ordinary person. And such an assignment to be the mother of the Messiah was something that she could have never imagined. And yet, that was exactly what the angel was telling her she would be. She said, how will this be since I am a virgin? And the angel went on to explain that the baby would be conceived by the work of the Holy Spirit. And then he gave an example of an impossibility that was now possible. He said, even Elizabeth, your relative, is going to have a child in her old age, and she who is said to be barren is in her sixth month. And so Mary did not know about that. Mary was so surprised because everyone thought that Elizabeth, being many, many years beyond the age of bearing children, that she could never have children. But God did a miraculous thing closely akin to how he did with Abraham and Sarah in the Old Testament. But the angel's remarks ended saying, for nothing is impossible with God. Mary, when she asked how could this be, she wasn't asking faithlessly. She was asking in faith. But she was just trying to make sense of it all. And Gabriel explained it to her, and then he illustrated what God had done with Elizabeth. And Cooperation with God teaches us that the impossible is possible with God. Now, I didn't say cooperation with God makes the impossible possible. That would be incorrect because that would mean that God could not do anything unless you or, or I were in full cooperation with Him. So God's power would be limited. But no, that's not the case at all. But what if Mary had not cooperated with God's plan? It's really a foolish argument because God in His uh, perfection is perfect in His selection process. He knew that she would cooperate, and He gave her the faith to cooperate in accepting this hard job, that, uh, this assignment that He had for her to do. It's not that God cannot do the impossible if we don't cooperate. He just chooses not to many times when we choose to resist what He wants to do. If our cooperation had to happen, that would make us indispensable in the things that God does. I read once a good illustration about indispensability. It said to do a little test to see if you're indispensable. It said, take a bucket and fill it full of water. Stick your arm into the bucket and then take your arm out. And the hole your arm leaves in the water shows how indispensable you are. You see, you will not even be able to tell that your arm was ever in the water, even though it displaced the water for a few seconds. We are not indispensable to God, any of us. You know, there's an interesting story in Jesus' life in, in Mark 6 that uh, he went back to Capernaum, where, uh, in the area where he had, had grown up, and the people there knew him from childhood, and they had a problem with him being there. They heard about him being the teacher and the miracle worker and so on. And he began to teach in the synagogue, and it says those who heard him were amazed. And then they said, where did this man get these things, they asked? What's this wisdom that has been given him that he even does miracles? 
isn't this the carpenter? Isn't this Mary's son, the brother of James, Joseph, Judas, and Simon? Aren't his sisters here with us? And they took offense at him. And Jesus said to them, only his hometown among his relatives in his own house is a prophet without honor. He could not do any miracles there except lay his hands on a few sick people and heal them. And he was amazed at their lack of faith. It's not that Jesus couldn't do it, but it's that he wouldn't do it because he rewards faith. Cooperation is important in our walk with God. You know, interesting thing about that incident in Mark 6 is we know that Mary had at least six other children because it named four brothers, and it says, and his sisters are there also in the plural. So that's six others that were younger siblings of Jesus. But when Jesus was there, the people's unbelief resulted in them missing out on the blessing of his power being displayed among them. Cooperation with God helps us recognize how he is at work within us. In a sense, cooperation becomes our teacher. It teaches us that the impossible is possible, and we see how God is sovereignly engineering circumstances and making all things work together for good for his purposes. But if we do not ex uh, cooperate with God, we do not learn from experience how faith works. And we miss out on the adventure of faith. I'm using the word cooperation, but maybe the word more accurately from a biblical term would be submission. That we submit to God. We submit to His will. Uh, when we submit to God's will, we are acknowledging that we're not in control, but yet in our life, in many ways, we are conditioned to think we are in control, but we are not. Mary tried to make sense of it all, and we try to do the same thing. But you know, when you think about it, a lot of things about faith are not reasonable, but at the same time, it's the only reasonable way to live by faith. Faith requires that we listen to our heart and spirit at some point. But much of the Christian faith is not reasonable. It's not reasonable that a sinless, holy God would come to earth as Jesus and become the sacrifice for our sins and pay the penalty of our sin. Why would he do that? God's love is, an ex is not explained by reason. It's experienced by faith. The resurrection from the dead is not a reasonable premise, but it's not natural in the way things in creation are, but yet it did happen in the case of Jesus, believing that he rose from the dead uh, and that he defeated sin and the power of sin and the power of death. We put our faith and trust in him for eternal life. That's how we are saved, and that's how we have the assurance that we uh, can be with him forever. It's true that in life we may have doubts and questions, but we need to cooperate with God in order to learn that the impossible is possible. Mary and Joseph did that, and their story has gone down in history of being the greatest uh, examples of those who had a challenging assignment, and they saw the impossible, the virgin birth, become a reality, and then they witnessed many other things in Jesus' life as, w as well. So in a, an assignment from God is a privilege. It's not a problem. It teaches us that the impossible is possible. And then also, if we are people of faith like Joseph and Mary, then we cooperate rather than negotiate with God's will. You know, I think that's a big mistake that we sometimes make in our Christian life. We negotiate with God about what we're willing to do. But you know how Mary responded in Luke 1, 38? She said, I am the Lord's servant, Mary answered. May it be to me as you have said. Then the angel left her. You know what Mary was saying? She was saying, your will be done, Lord. She knew this meant that she would be pregnant, not married. No one would believe her explanation that the Holy Spirit had made her pregnant, that she would be shamed because of this, perhaps ostracized from her family. And Mary did not say, Lord, your will be changed. Lord, wait a minute now. Let me have some input on this. If I'm going to carry this uh, child, then I need uh, to negotiate some things with you. She didn't try to do that. And Joseph did not either, although he almost did. In the Matthew passage, we see that, that he was troubled, that in learning that she was, was pregnant before they had been uh, married, and uh, he was a righteous man, did not want to expose her public disgrace, but he had a mind to divorce her quietly. So Joseph 
did not want to embarrass Mary. He did not want to throw her under the bus with the situation, or I guess in the first century it would have been throw her under the chariot that would go by. But under the circumstances, it was the humanly expected thing to do. But when the angel explained what was going on, Joseph believed also, and he readily did what God wanted him to do. It says, when he woke up, uh, he, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife, but he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son, and he gave him the name Jesus. This led to great joy for both of them, that they were experiencing a kind of joy that probably no other person's had ever experienced with the privilege that God had given them. Mary said in the, uh, her song of praise in verses 46 through 49 of Luke 1, she says, My soul glorifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has been mindful of the humble state of his servant. From now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me. Holy is his name. Do we cooperate with God, or do we negotiate with God? Do we accept his plans? Do we accept his assignments? When hard things come into our life, is it something that we readily in faith receive and believe and walk with him through that, or do we hesitate? Do we uh, uh, try to reason with God or, 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 or with another plan? It might be that you're listening and you know that God's been working your life and speaking to you about becoming a Christian, but you've never really made a commitment. You've never really trusted Jesus, come into your heart and life, and, and b believed and received, but, but he's speaking to you. And once again, even as I say this, it's a reminder that that's what you need to do. What are you waiting for? Uh, this is a, a blessing uh, in your life that you will never regret, uh, but... Uh, Maybe you need to take that step and quit saying to the Lord, well, let's wait, let's wait on that. Maybe you become a Christian, but you've never been baptized or never joined a church fellowship, and you realize, I need to do that. I need to, to be following him in obedience. I need to be serving him. It might be related to a decision about your job. It might be a decision about your education or a decision about your family uh, or other things. But think cooperation not negotiation with God. God will lead you. He will bless you and show you the way that he has for you. So this Christmas, what difference will the Christmas story make in your life as we revisit it again tonight? The answer has much to do with your level of personal cooperation with God. Uh, whatever God has called you to do, even if it's something very, very hard, you will be blessed if you will cooperate with God in faith instead of hesitate or negotiate with him. Uh, more importantly, others will be blessed as well. I read the story about a pastor and his family that had a uh, tradition of putting up Christian um, Christmas decorations in their yard, and they were signs, large signs that said peace, joy, and love, and then there was right beside it was a large cross. Well, one year, someone during the night stole one of the signs, and it, it was the sign that said joy. Who or why would somebody steal just one of them? Why would they steal the sign that said joy? Maybe the thief was depressed <laughs> and wanted some joy in his life. Maybe he was envious of these people who loved Jesus and, and really had uh, peace, joy, and love in their life. We don't know. But you know what? I think joy is stolen all the time. It's stolen from people's heart because they resist God instead of cooperate with God in faith. But we can learn from uh, Joseph and Mary how they cooperated with God, and we see that they had exceedingly great joy because of the birth of Jesus, that they had the privilege of being uh, the, the parents of this child. So it could be that you've stolen your own joy from your heart by refusing to do certain things or to uh, forgive someone or to um, uh, trust God or to move on 
from disappointments and challenges in your life, and you've stolen joy from your own life, what's the solution? Start cooperating the way Ma Mary and Joseph did, and you'll discover the, the meaning and message of Christmas makes a tremendous difference in your life. You will experience the joy of doing God's will. Will you bow with me for a time of prayer? Father, we thank you for the good news of Christmas. In this story of Jesus' birth, there are so many uh, chapters, I guess, or episodes or perspectives of people, real people like us, Lord, but yet they were on a journey of faith. And we too are on a journey of faith, Lord, and we have had a, a unusual year and many uh, different uh, difficult things have come about. We can see the relevance of hard assignments from you. But Lord, we are also encouraged and grateful that we can respond to those assignments with joyful obedience and cooperation. Lord, you give us the faith to do that. When it's hard, you've promised that you'll be with us. And I pray for each person that's uh, listening tonight that they would uh, realize that you are faithful and that you, even though you give us sometimes challenging things to do in life, you're faithful to walk beside us and to give us everything that we need. Your Holy Spirit will provide the strength and the power and the wisdom that we need. So, Lord, I pray your blessings on each one uh, this evening, each family at home, and may we indeed learn from these lessons of Christmas, learn from Mary and Joseph how to cooperate in faith with you, and we will experience the joy that you desire to give us. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, uh, I just want to say Merry Christmas to you, and let us know how we can help you and encourage you at Tesla Baptist Church. Uh, you can call the church or uh, email us, and we'll be glad to uh, uh, be a spiritual encouragement or meet with you and talk with you or other, if there's other needs we can help you with. Um, we're going to close with a song, Emmanuel. Emmanuel means God with us, and He is with us. And that's the good news of Christmas and the good news of the gospel. But in the most personal ways, is He with you? Do you know Jesus as your Lord and Savior? If not, Christmas is the great time to receive the greatest gift, the gift of eternal life given by Jesus Christ. God bless you. Uh, let us know how we can be an encouragement to you. Again, Amen.